ఒక్కరు చదువు How close was that? Let me, let me hear you do it. Well, you can say por que do, but you can say por que do. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, just tell me when to start. Oh, cool. Thanks. Um, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so my name is Merrick. I am the CEO of CreateGate. to kind of give you a um, quick little background of who I am and how CreateGate came to be. Basically, CreateGate is the first ever social network platform specifically and only for the local art scene. So it takes the idea of Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of that kind of merged together as one, and, but it's really only for um, creatives. And so um, my background is in music business. I have had my hand in radio and talent booking and all different types of stuff in industries and kind of over the years what I really saw is that they were so niche that they had a hard time kind of cross collaborating unless you had a bulky referral network and so um you know for the everyday person for the everyday creative who's just looking to collaborate or they're looking to promote their stuff or they they need a website built or they want to know how to make money or they need a PR campaign. All of these were real issues that I noticed that um, whether you're an actor, a model, a handcraft, good maker, Etsy seller, whatever it is, um, the, the problem is still the same. And so everybody in the art world or the creative world is really trying to, to take their, their product to the next step. So, um, and then on top of that, you know, you're dealing with how do I get booked for stuff and how do I, um, you know, connect with with venues or how do I connect with industry professionals all those things are are kind of out there so I decided to create a social network um, it ended up I started with the idea of doing it in the form of a website which a website is coming soon but we decided to navigate away from the website idea and do it in the form of an app first just because artists take pictures with their phones and upload you know their portfolio right in their hands So this is kind of a, a quick screenshot to give you an idea. For an artist, they can select up to three description words to be found. I'm an artist, a photographer, a videographer, a fashion designer, a filmmaker, whatever it is. Um, they select the city and the neighborhood in which they're, they're in. They can upload a portfolio of their work. They can promote their events. They can create a resume, all those things. So um, they can also sell their work. So I'm going to go through these really, really quickly because this is just kind of a snapshot of what this looks like. But as they can sell their stuff here, um, you can purchase it. They can promote their events, sell tickets there. They can, um, put, uh, this is basically still the event thing. You can go in and you can hit this location icon, find the kind of cool neighborhoods that are going on, click on that neighborhood and find everything that's happening in that neighborhood. You can also shop super local, or you can find artists on a, on a very local scene that way. Um, here's a picture of somebody's portfolio. This is an idea of, of what a resume might look like. So you can kind of upload or type in a resume here. Um, this is showing how something gets shared socially. So um, this piece actually ended up selling the day that I, that I posted it. Uh, somebody purchased it, so it's kind of cool. Um, Oops, this is a press kit. It kind of shows them how to actually create a press kit. So we're going to fly through that pretty quick. Um, this is pretty cool because we are coming out with a 2.0 version. We launched in May, um, just in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Denton. Now we've had, um, gosh, within the first month or two months, we had tons of cities requesting to bring it to their cities. So we are actually launching a 2.0 series, which will have um, an Etsy-esque model to it. It will also allow for industry professionals to come in and to create profiles as well. So you'll have record labels in our developers, agencies, entertainment lawyers, all of that being able to connect directly to local artists. This is, we're partnering up with Braintree, so we'll have a PayPal, Etsy deal. This is just um, a way to navigate through it. So you, if you're looking for um, an actual, if you're just looking for a photographer, if you're looking for I don't know, something for your event, you can actually just type it in into the app and it will populate the top rated artists in your area. So um, these are the cities that we are actually launching in in just a few weeks, Nashville, Denver, Detroit, Brooklyn, and New York City. 
And finally, we are out, I don't know if I'll have enough time for this, but we are actually coming out with a um, Ken Folk styled magazine which will feature top 25 most influential creatives within Dallas. As we launch the app into new cities, we will have that um, of becoming available for those cities. So it'll actually become a collector's item um, over time. I'm not being gonged yet. Um, you can follow us here. <laughs> Made it to the last slide. All right. That was great. We got a lot of questions. If you'll set the timer again for another five minutes. Cool. Yes, I saw the cities that you had listed, and I'm wondering from uh, just uh, from a perspective, why not Austin, Texas? Oh, Austin was in there. Sorry, I just didn't say it, but it was actually on that list. Yeah, Austin and Nashville and Detroit are our very next ones. Okay, how are you going to monetize this? What's so the... artists, it's actually a free platform from the basic. Um, any creatives or venues that actually want to sell merchandise on it, they um, do a subscription fee of ten ninety nine a month. Um, if there are products that are over a certain pound weight, then it's an added thirty cents per post, um, and then we take on a transactional side as well, ten percent. So um, in your pitch, you said it's for creatives. It, it sounds like it's for people looking for creatives. It's actually, right? I didn't go through it entirely, yeah. but it's for creatives primarily right now is who we're onboarding, venues as well, and then the third person is a fanatic. Right, but the, the people using it are not the creative. I mean, you're looking for people who are looking for them, right? So you're Correct, for but they have to, we have to populate that information first. Sure, so right sure. now so, we're, we're... So how are you getting the word out to people to know who, who will use it? Because you need them from to the fanatic it. side of things. Mm -hmm. um, we're, I'm just doing a whole lot of um, social marketing and stuff. We get probably per post, um, especially our videos are getting about 5,000, 6,000 views. So we have a lot of um, a lot of synergy happening yeah, right here. Now. That's that's great. What's the conversion on those 5,000 views? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I'd say we've got probably about 3,000 users right now. So. Um, I kind of need to go through it and find out. The majority of those users are actually artists, to, to be um, honest with you. We're going to do a whole other marketing push for fanatics once we feel that, those, that it's really bulking up in the artist world. So you initially started your pitch talking about the creatives and that's your world and the problems that you saw with that. One of the things that you talked about was um, you know, finding work and how you solve certain problems that creatives have. I didn't really hear the engagement aspect of the creatives, so is there a way for them to connect with each other? Or yeah. Okay. Can yeah. you talk a bit about that? There's a way for them to connect with each other. Um, there's a way for them to connect with venues. There's a way for them to connect with industry professionals and fanatics. But a lot of the times artists want to connect with each other for cl to collaborate. So, yeah. So on the uh, visual arts side, there's a lot of appropriation of artwork. How are you verifying that what someone presents as theirs is, in fact, theirs? Oh, that's a great question, um, and it's something to explore. I actually just had an artist um, kind of suggest that we do a, a watermark feature, um, which we haven't developed in it, but it could be something that they actually can watermark their stuff to show that it's an officially theirs. Um, it's the same issue that I think an Instagram might be having as well. It's just, you know, what people post socially, how do you keep it from not being, like, screenshot and reshared? Um, but I, I liked the watermark idea. I'm open up to suggestions as well. Oh, uh, yeah, I, would, I have no way of verifying that. It's like the same thing, just like Instagram or Facebook. I would have no idea if what they're posting is, is their own. So. Right now, the, um, the artist to get a good paying gig usually has an agent. Right, an agent or manager, usually an agent. Mm -hmm. So like actors and uh, painters and musicians. So what you're trying to do, it seems like the classic thing, you're giving power back to the people. Now the artists would have the power, mm -hmm. but yet how does the booking venue, the casting director, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, how do they find the artists, right? Because sure. they're gonna be bypassing the agent. So the agent is like a, a, a curator. Mm -hmm. to, okay, these are the best in the class, so they can go right to the agency and say, I want this, and they go, oh, we got it right here. Right. Now you seem like you're going to bypass the agent, so mm -hmm. uh, it almost seems like you need some sort of a 
voting or fan appreciation, so that way if I'm a venue or a casting director for film or an art gallery owner, mm -hmm. how would I know who to go to if sure. I'm going to bypass the agent? Otherwise, if I'm risk adverse, they all are, they're going to go to the agent. That's risk adverse. Yeah. Yeah, um, the way it's, but it's developed, also limiting, you know, they're not really seeing what's out there. So. Right. The way that it's um, developed currently is um, things that have the most likes actually populate to the top. Things that don't get, yeah, things that don't get much traction actually stay low in the feed. Um, and then as far as, um, you know, that question comes up for if I'm a gallery representing an artist and my contract with them, the artist, does, you know, can't sell outside of that. Um, that's kind of why this actually could help, is that the artists can still promote their own stuff, but in their contact information or any sales, it actually can redirect back to the gallery with their bank account or their contact information or however they would like it. Yeah. So what, what's your, you know, when you, when you talk about art, it's, there's festivals, there's different, different aspects that can increase your users. What is your plan to increase your users? Yeah.